Hello Internet! In this video we are going to be taking a look at how to do some cool fun tricks with multiple cameras. Uh, in our Discord channel, there's a link to that in the description, we had a discussion about some ways to kind of overlay objects in a scene without them being occluded by the meshes and stuff that are already in that scene. So say you want to have 3D objects as part of your UI or something else, uh, a common use of this is in like FPS shooters where you want your gun to be held by the player and not go through walls and things like that. Uh, there's some tricks you have to employ to kind of get that to work. Uh, another example might be, say, Skyrim's UI, where you would have a blurred out background and then you'd have the 3D image rendered of the armor or sword or whatever you're using. It's not super hard to accomplish, actually, and you can kind of do it... I wouldn't say easily, but you can do it in a, a pretty quick way. Uh, so the way that I usually approach this is by creating a, a game object, which will just be our like camera controller, for example. This can be totally empty. It doesn't need anything in it. And we're going to attach our main camera there. Now, this is based off of the lightweight render pipeline, which comes with a simple camera controller and a few other things. I'm going to move that camera controller onto the actual camera controller, which means that our main camera has all of the stuff for a camera, but it doesn't have anything else. And so I should still be able to like start this and fly around. The only difference is that now our main camera isn't the one controlling that. This is sort of important because the next trick is to add another camera. And so we're going to add another camera to this camera controller. You don't necessarily need to use uh, the parent and structure that I'm using. It doesn't matter here. It just gets makes it more easy if these two cameras share the exact same position. And the easiest way to do that is just by parenting them to one object. And so there's all these options here for this camera. And we can just see like there's a skybox, solid color, depth only, or don't clear for the clear flags. This is going to control how this clears things. And so it can be a really handy way to actually change, like, uh, I only want to do this, or if I want to turn my skybox off, for example, I could disable this uh, second camera and just set it to a solid color. And you'll see now if I go into the actual game, that skybox is now just a blue, and I can actually use that background color to change it. That's what's happening there. Uh, I don't use that one so much. Depth only is kind of useful. In this, we want skybox for the main camera. And then the second camera, we're going to call it our UI camera. I am going to enable it first and then call it our, or have it set to don't clear, which means it's not going to actually wipe the screen and clear everything beneath it. It's going to draw right on top. And so the, the advantage of that is that if we have anything, as long as this UI camera draws second, it's going to draw on top of whatever, no matter where it is. And so it makes it really easy to kind of draw things uh, underneath other things and still have them appear on top. So let's add uh, two cubes, for example. So first cube can just go to the center of the map. We'll make it kind of hover, do some weird things with it, and make it a bit bigger. <laughs> That's a bit too big. Cool. And so we can just set that there. And the next cube, we're going to call it our UI cube. And I should probably actually apply something to this to make it stand out. So let's just throw drywall paint on it. Sure. And we'll make it a little bit smaller as well. And we'll throw it behind. So now from our camera's position, we have this gray box and then we have this painted box. Let's actually use a different color because I have my ripple shader is blue. Uh, so light bulb, that could work. Sure, that's actually kind of interesting because it glows. Uh, so you can, it's very obvious. <laughs> I do have bloom and stuff applied here. And so hopefully, I've never done this with the lightweight render pipeline, but hopefully this will also demonstrate the second uh, interesting thing that can kind of happen with this uh, approach. So we have a cube and a UI cube. 
the problem is they're still getting drawn at the same time. So even though I named it the UI cube, that's not going to change anything. Even with this UI camera, it, nothing is different. The only thing that I've done is disabled post-processing because what's happening is this UI camera is drawing second, doesn't have any of the post-processing stack on it. So everything's disappearing. You can see it changes when I uh, disable and enable this camera. We have Bloom, so the UI camera is disabled, and then I can enable it, and the UI camera goes away. That's more of a side effect than anything. It's kind of what I was hoping to get to. We're going to kind of ignore that, because it, in this specific case, it doesn't super matter. So the UI camera isn't actually doing that much. There is one interesting thing that's going on here, is there's a depth for the camera. So this depth is zero here for the UI camera and is minus one for the main camera. Uh, the way cameras are drawn in Unity is from lowest to highest, which means minus one is drawn before zero. Uh, and so that means that our main camera is drawn first. If I change this to one, one is greater than zero, so our main camera is going to draw second, which means even with both cameras enabled, we should still have a working bloom. And if I disable this UI camera, nothing happens except our game runs a little bit faster because we don't render the same scene twice per frame. <laughs> so the best, or I guess the, the next step is to actually make this UI camera do what we want. Uh, so we're going to push this main camera back to minus one and change nothing else. We don't really have anything else to change but I do need to add a layer. And so the, the way that I usually approach this effect is have like a UI layer or something else. Uh, just call it, I guess UI already exists, but we can call it, we can just reuse the UI layer, honestly. Uh, at least for this effect, I'm not using it for anything else, so it just kind of makes sense. So what we're going to do is assign the UI layer, that's the post-processing layer, the UI layer to our UI cube. We don't really need to change anything else. I'm just saying that this UI cube is part of the UI layer. Uh, Unity will separate things by layers, and so you can actually detect things that way. In this case, what that's actually going to help us do is select things with our camera. Cameras have a culling mask that allows them to say, here's what I want you to draw with this camera we can use that to draw just the UI layer with this UI camera, which means our UI camera isn't going to draw the rest of the scene. And so we can apply that, that like I've just done, you can see the camera preview is just the UI. And so if I actually render this now, we're going to not get it on top like I had hoped. Well, that's weird. Why didn't that work? <clears throat> huh. Okay. Weird. We don't have a depth thing clearing it, so I don't really know what's going on here. Traditionally, that would have worked. Unless I've screwed something up and then it, it uh, obviously shouldn't have worked, but I feel like it should have worked. So instead, we're also going to disable the UI from this calling mask gonna move forward because I don't know what's going on and maybe this will fix it nope okay we're gonna turn the UI back on main cameras back in its normal state everything's good why isn't that rendering <laughs> that's really weird okay so the way this know that I'm used to this working Unless I, maybe I'm missing something, but it's been a few years. But the way that, that this should work is you have two cameras running one on top of the other. The main camera renders everything except your UI. And then your UI camera comes in afterwards and says, render the UI on top of everything else. And so because those two happen in sequence and your UI camera is ignoring the depth What's going to end up happening is your entire scene gets rendered and then your UI camera comes in afterwards and says, but what about all of this? And puts that in as well. And since you're ignoring the depth with this don't clear flag, everything should be drawn, but it's not. <laughs> so if I bring this up here 
and disable the UI layer. From that, you can see it disappeared from the camera preview. Do we see the, the glowing cube? And we do. That's really weird. <laughs> um, and I... Why does it go behind things? Is there something going on with like culling or... Or is it because I used that specific material? What is this? Sample assets materials light bulb. I'm really curious what this is because lightweight render pipeline physically blah. Physically based. But it's not transparent or doing anything weird. So it wouldn't necessarily, oh, that's weird. Um, the thing that I was checking was to make sure that this was not a transparent shader. If it was a transparent shader, they render differently. But it isn't a transparent shader and it's still not working. So now I'm super confused. That shouldn't change anything. But yet if I go here and put this behind, it does. <laughs> That's really interesting. The only thing it's done is remove the, the um, what's it called? The rendering stuff from it. It's like this don't clear is just being ignored. Oh, what? Now it works? Hold on. Oh. No, that doesn't make sense. Why would that? That doesn't make any sense at all. Huh. Unless I'm... Oh. Oh. Okay. So I screwed this up a little bit. It's been a, been a bit since I've done this, but that clear flag, I had it mixed up. I had it backwards. By not clearing anything, I was uh, passing in the depth buffer from the previous camera. So the main camera was, the way this works is there's an optimization in your renderer that passes in a depth buffer, which is going to store the depth of every pixel. And if things are behind it, your shader is going to say, I'm already behind this wall or whatever. You don't need to draw me. And so by not clearing that depth buffer, when we passed it into the second uh, UI camera, the shader for this box was saying, I'm behind something, don't draw me. By clearing the depth, we're preventing that from happening. We can also clear it to like a solid color. That's kind of pointless because then we lose everything we did the first time. But by clearing just the depth, we're removing that uh, problem. We're making it so it will render through things because the depth check assumes that nothing is there. This will still allow the depth checks in that UI layer to work. So if I have another cube in that UI layer that's behind it, it's never going to render in front of it unless you have a transparent shader and do something really weird. Um, we, won't, we won't get into that because that's just transparent shaders are weird. Um, anyway, this way, I should be able to play this now. And you can definitely see that that UI cube is on the other side. You, can already see it because that's moved through it just kind of looks deceptive but it's definitely over here but yet we can see through it and so this way you can actually see those things one thing that's happening right now that is a little bit odd is we have this post process layer that is being applied to everything but that UI layer this may or may not be what you intend and the only real way to kind of uh, tweak this, for example, is to move this up the ladder. So put this on the UI camera. The problem with doing this is it will apply to both of them, which means our UI camera is going to be applying this post-processing effect to the main everything rendered with the main camera and everything rendered with the UI camera. It doesn't work in parts. Uh, you could maybe make that happen, but there's nothing here that's going to allow that to, to do it. You'd have to implement it yourself. And so if you want like a special effect on your main scene, but not on the UI, 
that's possible, but if you want something on the UI and not on the main scene, it gets a little bit more complicated. The cool thing with this is if you're familiar with, say, Skyrim, uh, I don't actually understand how to use this, so I'm actually going to ignore this example. But uh, if you wanted, for example, you could add a blur behind to blur the rest of the scene, but not the UI. That's an option. But doing it the other way gets a little bit odd. So you kind of have to mix and match these post-processing things to kind of get them in the order that you expect them to work in and think a little bit harder about that. It's not quite as easy, but this works. So that's sort of how you, I guess, create two cameras. Like, like I said at the beginning, one of the big use cases for this is first-person shooters. When you have a, a gun, for example, it's very easy to have that extend outside of your character controller, and when that happens, it's possible for that gun in the real world to actually go through walls and things like that. You don't want that to render as going through the wall on the player's screen, and so if you put the the gun and whatever in this UI camera, or whatever else you want to call it, the first-person perspective camera, you can overlay that on top of the scene. There's a little extra work that has to go into aligning everything so it actually looks what you're seeing, looks like what everybody else is seeing. Uh, but that's a really common trick that's used in a lot of uh, professional games. So it's not super hard. I kind of screwed it up because I hadn't done it in a while and I misunderstood the clear flags. It actually talks about it too. But um, anyway, we'll just ignore that. But that that's sort of how you do this. It's a really easy effect that is... A nice way to kind of clean up some of those visual effects that you might get in a first person game with things just going through other things and it it's not too hard to do so there's that it should have a pretty minimal effect on your performance as well there might be some batching and stuff that can't happen because of putting objects in two different render uh, things but for the most part I don't think adding extra cameras that are drawing in like completely exclusive layers is going to slow things down too much. Uh, but I haven't really explored that that much. So obviously don't add a new UI camera. Like you don't need six of these in order to render the UI. You just need one for the entire thing. And you don't even need the entire UI to exist in this UI camera layer. You can do mix and match and do whatever you want. This will just effectively create an overlay in your world. So that's how that works. Hopefully that was helpful. If not, um, let me know what I can do better in the comments. Uh, if it was helpful, I'd love to see what you guys are building. So uh, link them or send me a link or do something like that. It'd be cool to see. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, we have a Discord channel, so if you're running into issues or just have questions about development or games or whatever, uh, you can come join that as well. That's in the description. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. So until then, see you, internet.